Hello there guys, what's going on? I'm Bryn, I'm the Game Survivor, and I am so, so, so excited! And that's because uh, I just read on Reddit today, in the Dwarf Fortress subreddit, uh, and the gaming subreddit, that the next Dwarf Fortress update, Dwarf Fortress 2014, is coming out next month! That is so, so exciting! We've been waiting for this update for two years now, and it's finally on its way. Uh, Toadie announced that, I think it was yesterday, or maybe even the day before. Anyway, it's trending on Reddit now, everyone's really excited about it, and I thought I'd break down for you guys some of the things that I'm looking forward to the most out of this update. There's lots and lots of stuff coming. Uh, some of the things that you guys might be the most interested in, as well as what uh, will be the most game-changing things in this update. So I really hope you guys enjoy this video. I may not actually even post up some gameplay, I might just have it in sort of a list format or something. Uh, so that you guys know exactly what's going on with this update. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit like and don't forget to subscribe for more indie game and Dwarf Fortress content. But let's get right into it, guys. Hope you guys enjoy. Now, when you guys think of Dwarf Fortress, you may not think Adventure Mode. Most people play Dwarf Fortress for Fortress Mode, which is fair enough. It's the most in-depth mode in the game, at least in my opinion. You guys may differ uh, in on that front. But definitely, it, Dwarf Fortress mode is more popular than Adventure mode. Well, that might change after this update. Uh, this update's bringing a huge amount of new things uh, to Adventure mode. Um, and some of the biggest include uh, armies and new sites in the game. Uh, now, armies are essentially going to be controlled by civilizations and towns, and they're going to be able to tra travel across the map and invade enemy towns, which is really, really cool. Uh, on, of its own accord, but the, the, the coolest part of it is that they'll actually build camps, they'll stop for the night, they'll build camps, and you can come across those camps um, in your travels as an adventure, adventurer. And you can choose to, you know, befriend the people in these camps. Obviously, they're not going to be too friendly towards you because, you know, they're at war. They're going to be, you know, trying to stick to business. But um, you can, you know, interact with these camps in various different ways, which is really, really cool. You can also probably, I, I'm assuming, I'm not really sure, but you can probably come across battles between uh, these armies and their enemies, which will be absolutely fantastic. Obviously, you know, that's going to be a bit of a drain on the old CPU, but <laughs> it'd certainly be really, really cool to see uh, an elf army, for instance, clashing with a human army. That would be absolutely amazing to view. Uh, and I dare say we will we'll get to see that in the near future. Now, we are also going to see s new sites for many of the different races and creatures in the games, including elves, uh, who are going to build orch orchards. Uh, they're also going to have enormous trees with canopies uh, 30 meters wide or so. Now, you guys may be thinking, whoa, how's that possible? Trees don't have canopies in Dwarf Fortress. Well, they do now. Uh, one of the bi other big game-changing things that's been added to the world is multi-tile trees with big canopies and leaf litter and that kind of thing as well, which is really cool. So elves are going to have those. Goblins are going to have really big cave networks underground, very similar to those that are in The Hobbit. Uh, if you guys have read that book or seen that film, uh, seen those films, sorry. <laughs> You're also, there's also going to be prisoners with prisoners to... Prisons, sorry, with prisoners to release uh, in Adventure Mode. Uh, you can come across these uh, any of these sites in Adventure Mode. There's also going to be naturally spawning dwarf fortresses, which is fantastic. Obviously, they're not going to be as elaborate as what you MLG elite players can build, <laughs> but they're still going to be very interesting to see. Um, there, there's also going to be a dwarf leadership hierarchy within those fortresses. Now, I couldn't find exactly what that pertains to, but I think it might be some kind of uh, similar to the kind of thing that um, you build. Uh, in Dwarf Fortress mode with a Baron, with a King, all these Lords, etc. I'm assuming that's going to be something to do with that. Now, linking into that, player fortresses can actually also be retired and turned into NPC fortresses, which can then be visited in Adventure mode. That's so exciting! Imagine, visit, imagine building this huge bustling city underground and then coming to visit it, uh, still functioning with NPC characters run by you know, an NPC leader in Fortress mode. And even the, the, the co even cooler part about that is, you could potentially overthrow the king of that fortress and become its leader as a, as an adventurer. That is so exciting. That ah, oh, that uh, would be absolutely incredible to do. Um, now, there's also going to be demon sites in inverted commas. Uh, there's no details on that so far. Toady hasn't released anything about that. Um, he wants to avoid spoilers, but I dare say there's going to be some pretty exciting stuff uh, on that front. And uh, yeah, I'll be keeping you guys up to date on what those sites actually are all about. Now, one of the other really big game-changing updates to the game uh, is inheritance. Now, positions uh, exist in the game, and they can be inherited through world generation currently. 
but through this update, positions can then be inherited in-game as well. And this can lead to con succession conflicts, which is really, really cool, because one of the other updates that's happening is uh, separate entities, separate creatures can have simultaneous claims on a position instead of uh, a position being wholly owned by one creature. Uh, separate creatures can have a claim to that position even if one creature actually holds that position, if that makes sense. So if a leader dies and there's two or three or even you know up to like 10 or 20 uh, people with, with claims on that position, uh, this can lead to, you know, civil wars, uh, big conflicts, obviously smaller conflicts as well if it's a mayor that's died, but if it's a king of a, of a huge uh, civilization, that could lead to some really massive splintering or, and, and faction-based warfare, which is really, really cool. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that in action. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, the sort of randomness of that uh, existing in the game. That's really something to look forward to, in my opinion. Now, some of the sort of less significant things, changes to the game, but are still, you know, quite important. Uh, smarter AI. Now, um, specifically, this is referring to AI being able to choose whether they want to p participate in a battle lethally or non-lethally. Now, this means uh, that there won't be any of that horrible bloodshed in the middle of the street like <laughs> it normally is if you meet someone you hate. Um, they're not going to kill you on sight. They might just, you know, try and knock you out or something, which is really cool. I think that's a really good idea. There's also going to be a sneaking mechanic in Adventure Mode. Um, and that's that's really really cool. Uh, obviously, it'll um, slow your movement, uh, and there'll be field of view arcs for enemies. Uh, there's also going to be a tracking mechanic, which links into sneaking. I'm not entirely sure how that works, uh, but from what I've read, it's sort of like a trail of information that's uh, that's left on the ground, left uh, behind a, an entity, including yourself. You can actually be tracked by enemies, which is really cool. Um, that uh, other creatures can then look at and find out information about the movements of that creature, which is awesome. There's also an updated reputation mechanic. You can become famous in towns by doing heroic acts. Uh, but if you just want to elevate yourself above the level of a complete stranger, you can just wander around the town a little bit and people will get to know you. Um, townspeople are also going to have allegiances, which is really cool, to warlords and leaders, even within specific towns. Uh, half the town might have an, uh, might have their allegiance to the mayor of the town. The other half of the town might have their allegiance towards uh, someone who has a claim on the mayor's position, which is really cool. That could lead to some uh, civil wars and small rebellions within towns, or larger ones over the, the over across entire civilizations, which is awesome. Uh, we're also going to see more movement abilities and abilities of uh, the, the adventurer, the, the player character. The ability to jump and climb, for instance, that's also going to ex be extended to NPC characters. The ability to sheath weapons um, and the ability, I, I couldn't quite figure out exactly what uh, how this was going to work, but the ability to vary your speed, uh, to walk, to run, to do all the intermediate stuff in between, to sprint, um, which is really cool. Obviously, um, you have to slowly speed up towards a run. You can't just immediately start sprinting at top speed and then immediately drop back. You have to actually accelerate. Apparently turning corners as well is going to slow you down. That's really cool. I'd be interested to see how that's implemented into the game. Uh, there's also uh, sort of a new intimidation mechanic um, that's going to allow you to intim intimidate and scare people more realistically, which is really cool. Um, having your Carrying your weapon out on the street, for instance, is going to intimidate people and they're not going to like that. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of new plants and seeds, which is really cool, such as the multi-tile trees that I was just talking about before. There's going to be a bunch of economy updates as well. The economy will now be based on supply and demand, which is really good. It'll be based on um, uh, the, the surrounding area, surrounding markets, surrounding towns, all that kind of thing. There'll be updates to the markets as well. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, there's a great deal of new content coming, which is really, really exciting. I hope you guys are excited as I am, because I am absolutely over the moon, even if I'm not the, the most elite Dwarf Fortress player out there. Um, if you guys want to see more Dwarf Fortress content from me, let me know. Uh, as I said, I'm not a super good player, but if you want to see me do a Let's Play or some tutorials or something, let me know. I know a little bit about Dwarf Fortress, so <laughs> I'll be bringing you some day one content um, of the, the new patch. So don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with that. And don't forget to hit like as well. I really, really appreciate it when people so show support for my videos. But that's just about it from me, guys. Have a good one, and I'll see you later.